Right. One of the big issues today is is the issue of foreign corruption and influence uh, in our elections. So I'll start with you, Charlie. Is it appropriate for a president of any party uh, at any time to solicit assistance from, from a foreign country to influence our elections? No, and that's why Hillary Clinton should be tried and put in jail for what she did. Yeah, we all agree with that. President Kennedy. President Kennedy. To the Ukrainian phone call, it's one of the most intentionally misrepresented phone calls that you could ever come across. He never asked a foreign president to try to intervene to investigate Joe Biden. Instead, the favor he asked for was to try to go after CrowdStrike. It was the president of Ukraine that first brought up Mayor Giuliani. It was the president of Ukraine that brought up the topic of corruption. This phone call is being intent intentionally misrepresented. And guess what? It was a setup from within our own government. Congressman Adam Schiff changed the whistleblower laws. He met with the whistleblower well before it became public, sat on it for over two months. And there's a lot around this, and so if we're talking about foreign collusion with adversaries, I think we should... Oh wait, we are looking into the origins of the Russia investigation in Fusion GPS, which is now a criminal investigation, and we'll see what happens. Kyle. Okay, so... You were almost there, Charlie. You were so close, but so far at the same time. So, okay, you're actually correct about one thing you said there. Hillary Clinton did indeed try to get foreign help in the election against Donald Trump with Ukraine. But I don't know why you have to be so hacky when you say Trump didn't try to do the exact same thing. That's exactly okay. what he did. So, show me in the transcript, where did he do that? There's a reason why Donald Trump's only response now is, there was no quid pro quo, no, no, no quid pro quo at all. Because that's his only dodge, because he was obviously trying to get done as well on Joe Biden. Show me when he did that. He was asking for, he was asking the president to go after CrowdStrike, which was foreign meddling in our own election. He never, ever said, ever go after Joe Biden. The idea no. of corruption. He was talking about Burisma and he was talking about the money that Joe Biden that was, was getting Burisma paid. Burisma was never mentioned in the phone call. Now you're inferring you're no, looking no, no. into it. You don't have to infer it. He wants him to investigate Joe Biden. What do you think he's he never investigating him investigate. for? Puppies and rainbows? He said, for the I money want he was getting to go paid. after CrowdStrike. This is a very important thing because if you look at the actual transcript of the phone call, and you look at who no brought up the topics. Quo. Right, and by the way, there was no quid and no quo because the Ukrainian president time and time again said that the aid was not intentionally withheld. We didn't even know the aid was withheld. We never made calls about the aid that were withheld. Doesn't matter, he was still trying to get dirt, and that's obvious. Listen, but show again, me in the call where it says that. I mean, hold on now. Please, you sound like Trump with the no, literal, like, uh, like a, a facts, direct literal like, interpretation of this is uh, exculpatory of me. Everybody knows what he was trying to do because he runs the government like a mafia boss. Now you could like that or dislike that, but it is what he was trying to do. Now here's the difference between me and you. The difference between me and you is I will admit that Hillary Clinton and did, did indeed try to reach out to the Ukrainian government to get dirt on Trump. And in fact, that's how we learned about Paul Manafort and his corruption is because Hillary did reach out to the Ukrainian government and did get dirt. Now, I'm willing to say in the case of Hillary Clinton, that's dead wrong. You all need to ask yourself, why is it he can't admit the obvious on the other side? Why is it Donald Trump did nothing wrong at all? It's ridiculous. So, so Kyle, I'll ask the third time. Look, at, I want you to cite the specific part of the transcript call. Early, I don't have the fucking transcript United, in front of me. Well, because Why are you being exists? ridiculous? <laughs> because if it existed, if this smoking gun existed, people would say, here's what he said wrong, and here's the specific U.S. criminal code that was violated. It simply does not exist. Instead, they're inferring. Okay, they're sorry. saying, oh, this reads Trump like how mob got boss We got it. You this can all much comes down to this Trump did nothing wrong. Next this, question. This all comes down to this. From spring of 2016, the media talking heads were floating out uh, impeaching Donald Trump before he was even elected president of the United States impeachment was ramped up ramped up ramped up and Kyle you totally and completely agree with this I know this that there was something so suspicious and so immoral and so wrong what our own FBI and our own internal government did to this president to play, plant information to use the Democrat National Committee to collude with foreign adversaries to lie to a FISA court judge and spy on a political opponent that you might disagree with and I hope justice will finally be held with that however Kyle I understand that there's pent-up anxiety and dissatisfaction with this president because he won an election that he wasn't supposed to win. However, that does not give you the license I to misrepresent what he has done, what he has done. And time and time again, the Democrats swing and miss. For two years, I was promised some sort of big, huge bellwether revelation of the Mueller report. Oh, Mueller is coming. $30 million taxpayer-funded investigation, and they found absolutely nothing. And what did they do as soon as the Mueller investigation ended? As soon as the Mueller investigation ended, they went to the Ukrainian investigation. This goes down to one very, very, two very simple things. Number one, they have not accepted the democratically elected president of the United States who won an election he was not supposed to win. Number two, they hate Donald Trump a lot more than they love America. Just so you know, I'm not, I'm I'd saying, like to, I'd I'm like not to, saying they, I'm not saying you, I'm saying the general they. Listen, uh, thank you for inviting me to the Charlie Kirk monologue night. I really appreciate it. I'll let you finish on this. Right. 
Okay, so let me respond to that. I'll sum up what he just said in a really simpler way, and you won't have to sit through it all. Um, Donald Trump good, Democrat bad. Very high-minded, Charlie. Thank you very much. So anyway, here's the difference. I'm willing to admit when Democrats do something wrong. What Charlie Kirk will not admit on this stage here tonight is that Donald Trump owns a hotel in Washington, D.C. Yes. And oh, would you look at that? The Saudi government just happened to funnel him $300,000 through that, through that hotel. Oh, would you look at that? Donald Trump just approved a multi-billion dollar weapons deal that goes to Saudi Arabia as they're committing a genocide in Yemen. Now, hold on, hold on. Now, I get the sense that if I gave you that exact set of facts, and it was the fucking Clinton Foundation, yes. you'd be pretty fucking pissed yes. off. criticize him for fucking anything. So all right, all right, Charlie, I'll let you I'll let you respond, but hold on, let me let me add another dimension to this because we don't protest too much, I think is how the old okay. goes. But. So um, this has been framed in the lens of, of corruption. Yeah. And so we've talked about what, what the what Biden's son did. So how do you how do you weigh the corruption of what Biden's son did with what the Trump kids are doing internationally. If you put them on the same level. Yeah, I'm happy uh, to respond to yeah. and, and then, and also importantly, how do we fix that in the future? How do we prevent future kids of politicians from profiting off their so, offices? Yeah, if you're looking for someone to defend Saudi Arabia, you know this, Kyle, I'm not gonna do that. I think that our inside out alliance with Saudi Arabia has been a mistake for the last 20 or 30 years and they've misdirected us throughout the Middle East, and no, I don't support their their, war, their proxy war of Yemen. So there I am, disagreeing with something. What about the $300,000 that went to Trump? Two. I'm happy to respond to that. I think it's laughable, to be honest. When a guy has a net worth of $3.8 billion and has hundreds of millions of dollars going through his entire international organization, that somehow he's influenced by $300,000 at a DC asset hotel to approve a weapons deal. I mean, if that, there you go. You're the conspiracy theorist if you think that's actually what's happening. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to look through the Saudi weapons deal because my companies do hundreds of millions of dollars, and I don't know the Saudis bought three hundred, you know, a couple did three hundred thousand dollars in overs and, and uh, hotel nights. Let me go to Joe Biden. Kyle has similar distaste for the Biden family, so I'm not going to loop him into my critique here. However, conventional Democrats are protecting Joe Biden and yet trying to parallel it against Trump. Here's the big difference. As soon as the Biden, as Biden took office in 2008 as vice president, Hunter Biden went forth and sought international deals. He went on a board in Burisma that he was totally unqualified for, that he didn't speak the language, he had no familiarity with the territory or region. He had no understanding of natural, gra natural gas or upstream development, earning $80,000 plus dollars a year, not to mention his deal with the Chinese where he went on Air Force Two halfway across the world, the Chinese officials, and six days later secured a $1.5 billion investment deal for his head for his fund, of which he was uniquely unqualified to run for. What's the difference with the Trumps? The day that his, that their father became the President of the United States, they, they stopped all international business deals. They did, not, they did not sign one new Roll. deal. The only international business Roll. that they did were deals that were on the books for five plus years more. Kyle, I'm, you're entitled to an opinion, but you're not. You're not entitled to your oh, own yeah, facts. I know, Charlie. Friend. Nice political so, talking point you got yeah. there. Who'd you get that from, John Kasich? Uh, okay. So listen. And so, here's the bottom line, and I hope everybody looks this up. You know how much money Jared and Ivanka made since Donald Trump became president? Eighty-three million dollars in one year. If you think there's nothing wrong with that, I got a bridge to sell you. So these were previously owned assets. They did not sign one new deal since they were, they were in the administration. Point to me one new deal the Trump family signed since Donald Trump. You don't make $83 million another, in one year another. without well, being a I grab know. bag of corruption. Like you know this. Called the okay. Kushner companies that own some of the most valuable assets in New York. So that income was, pre, that was, that was deals that were already signed and revenue streams that were already established. The Bidens, the big difference, as soon as their da his, his dad became president, he said, it's money time, he went to Burisma. He went to Hungary and did some very questionable legal deals that are just coming out right now, and he got $1.5 billion from our greatest enemy, the Chinese, into his own fund because he took the Chinese on Air Force Two halfway across the world. That is morally objectionable. If the Trumps went to China and came back with $1.50, the media would publicly crucify them. They have done nothing of the sort. So, and, and as you respond to that, let's get to the second part of the question, which is how do we actually fix this? How do we prevent kids of any 
president, regardless of their political party. The way you fix this is you have intellectually honest people call out corruption where they see it, whether it's on the Democratic side or the Republican side. Somehow I can see it on both sides, whereas Charlie Kirk thinks Daddy Trump did nothing wrong. Look, I'll ask you again, Kyle, show me one deal that they signed since they became president. My dude, I don't know if you're listening or not, but I said very clearly, can you, can you, you name don't, deal? Okay, are you going to let me talk? Just name a deal, Are you going to let me talk? You, 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 you don't make $83 million in one year when daddy is president as an oopsie. Right, so their income the year before that was 90 million and 95 million. They do, they did business before they went into the White House, so they did not sign no, no, no. deal. This is, this is the cute little trick. This is the cute little that, trick. Right? Um, because as soon as I say, well, hold on now, it's proven that he took $300,000 from the Saudis while in office, he's like, oh, that doesn't count either. Well, it's so whether they're in office or they're out of office, it doesn't matter and it's not corruption. Well, isn't that fucking convenient? That's but, super convenient, isn't it? Yeah. Here, here's the other thing that really fascinates me, and you have, maybe you can explain it to me, Kyle, is that when you own international assets and you become president of the United States, are you just supposed to sell everything? Yes! Yes! Really? Yes! Wow. Yes! Wow. Yes! wow. So let's, let's, make, let's, build up, let's build out this argument. So you spent, you spent, you hold on, Kyle, you spent 50 years building a business from nothing, Fighting back bankruptcy, with daddy renegotiating money. creditors, employing hundreds of thousands of people over 50 years, and then you give that business to your kids. That's not good enough. You somehow have to sell everything in a fire sale to try to appease the media and the far left wing. There is a problem. So you will not be perfectly happy until Donald Trump's net worth goes down significantly. Basically, what this is all about is in search of corruption that does not exist. Oh, please. Oh, the reason it does not exist is that Republicans and conservatives are held to such an unrealistically high standard. If President Trump's sons were going around to China right now, seeking out money, seeking out deals, it would be it would be all over the news. Hunter Biden, you know this, Hunter Biden went to Ukraine for you one reason. You sure know how to talk a lot, don't you? I'm sorry, what? You sure know how to talk a lot. But, Kyle, you should start refuting what I'm saying, not swearing and walking oh, around. Yeah. 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 All right. I'll let you get the last round yeah, yeah, okay. move on. No, this, this, will, this will be very simple, and I'll go right to the point, unlike him. Um, so, there's a president by the name of Jimmy Carter. He had a fucking peanut farm, and he had to sell his peanut farm because the Supreme Court rightly said, you know what, man, that could be an issue because you could have foreign governments funneling you money through your peanut farm, and we can't have corruption. We're supposed to be a first world country. But somehow, this fucking president gets to have hotels all over the world, a hotel in D.C., the Saudis funneling him money. Let me say this one more time, and this will be the final time. If this was the Clinton Foundation, I would be just as up in arms. But when it's the Trumps, I'm up in arms and you're not, and that says a lot. All right, final, final question.